Yo, what's up guys, Say Chronicles here, and I woke up pretty early for Naraka, but apparently I can go back to sleep. <laughs> what the fuck is, why is this fucking maintenance so long? Either how, you might ask, why are you making this video if you can't show jack shit right now? We have the patch notes, and within the patch notes there are a few extra things that I actually did not really expect us to get already, because NA recently got it as well. So, let's look at those. So, first of all, we have boiling water. That's all okay. We have like a bunch of things. We can play it three times per week, which is actually strange because normally the raid on release would be a daily entry right away. But in NA, at some point, they go for daily entries to weekly entries. And apparently, they give us the weekly entries right away. Personally, I didn't really like this because it felt like more disconnected from the game because at some point you get to the point where you just do all of your weekly things on Monday and then you just don't really look at them anymore. So personally, I don't really like this, but for some people it's more chill so you don't have to do all of your raids daily. You can just actually just burst through all of them like in one day or something like that. But yeah, we're getting it three times per week right away. And if I'm not mistaken, they also changed that to White Castle too. So the same thing we have for uh, Foggy at the moment. So we have the uh, stuff that you can buy with the coins over there. That's cool. Actually, this will give us a lot less rewards. Because the moment that this happened in NA server, they changed it to only drop legendaries and no longer heroes. So we're actually getting a really nerfed, shitty version of Naraka as far as I'm seeing. It kind of sucks. I don't know. We got another outfit. Not that interesting, but that's okay. We can have that. Yeah, that's cool. And this is where you can find it. Cool. Um, then we also have that. Yeah, this is what I said. White Castle is also going to three times per week, which I think really sucks. You can still do the unlimited of the leaves, that kind of shit. And uh, we have the... Yeah, now you have like legendary equipment is guaranteed. So that's the stupid thing. Like they... The moment they nerf the entries, they should up the legendary drop rate. But here we have the nerfed entries right away and no legendary drop rate. That's pretty shit, like not gonna lie. But yeah, okay, everyone is f having that issue. But for how everything is kind of boosted for us in Europe server, this is like hella nerfed, I would say. So then we also have the um, quest for boiling water, that's okay. And then we have this one for Naraka that you can also do some quests, like similar to what you have towards the other things. Then we have hero area, and this will be your new area where you will be AFKing most likely instead of just in normal uh, the normal world AFKing for fighting monsters. You will do that in hero area, where you can get like a bunch of runes mainly. Uh, there's actually a whole bunch of stuff you can get over there, like runes. You can get gold over there. You actually get some crafting materials there as well. Um, you get crafting materials to craft runes, and you also have a bunch of outfits there that are actually pretty decent, I would say. So then you also have for each area, so all of the five areas that you have, they have a specific element. So for example, you have like the last element that is a buff attribute is dark, so dark does extra damage and receives less damage. So therefore, instead of having your pretty much same team for all of your areas, you kind of have to think about like, okay, do I have some dark damage dealers or... Um, how do I want to run around with that? Um, what we've been doing a lot is like running around with Bernard and that kind of stuff. In here, you probably want to take two supports and a tank and then one damage dealer, depending on like your main character as well. I named four because Orbia, for example, can be the damage dealer. But these units are a lot more tanky. I'm not sure how this is going to work in Europe because we have a pretty active server. So in NA, you're pretty much walking around solo. In EU, you might be walking around with a whole bunch of people. So I'm not entirely sure how that will work. You also have a bunch of bosses in here and that kind of stuff that spawn at like certain hours. Those gives pretty decent rewards as well, but those are going to be cleared pretty fast in Europe server. Uh, if Well, that's pretty much just what I expect. And afterwards, we also have Battlefield. So Battlefield is a 9v9. It's pretty cool. I really enjoyed Battlefield a lot. Um, we have three entries per day, but they stack up until 12 entries. So technically, if you do four, like if you have 14 entries left and then it goes to the next day, you actually get four or you have 11 entries left and you go to the next day, you will get 14. So that's pretty chill. Um, also, once again, it's one of those contents. You don't have to do it every day. You could say like, okay, one day I just like burst through all of them. 
Uh, a thing to keep in mind is you have specific time windows in which you can join as individual or as individual and as party. Um, from what I've noticed in NA is that most of the time the party area is the one where all of like the high rank people go in together and then you have a very high rank match. Whereas in the individual one is a low rank match. So that's just something like if you want to play like a higher rank match, probably go for party. And individuals mostly like a lower, like lower um, power people in there. But you have like the good odds of some of like 450k power being in the match with some of like 100k power. Is that necessarily an issue? Not really. I will make a specific video on Battlefield as well. But uh, there's a few things that you can do to be useful in the battlefields. And if you're a lower power, just go mining, refine those uh, stones and therefore actually get your points in. If you uh, get takedowns, you also get certain points, but it is not just killing each other. There's actually more to it than just killing each other. But like I said, I will go for a, a specific video on that. And if I'm not mistaken, there is also something that uh, this is kind of a different version than I used to in NA. They updated in NA when EU was released, so it's kind of different as well. So I kind of have to figure out how this works exactly right now. But there's also a bunch of rewards for like, okay, who does the most takedowns and a whole bunch of stuff you get like this is definitely something you don't want to miss out on because this is a very good income for both sky stones and for gold and these fields or these victory seals you can also trade in for devil months at some point so this is definitely content you want to do and in my opinion it's also pretty fun of content to do like pretty much all the time so I definitely will be streaming this apparently they also have like seasons for this right now which gives extra rewards which is pretty cool, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'll have to see how that exactly works out. Then we also finally have Oracles. And Oracles mean we will have Juno. Juno is a very good meta unit um, for PvP. So that is pretty nice. Uh, we will see the Oracle skins at the, or the skills at a later moment. We also get Viva Chell. Viva Chell is added in there right now as a monster story. Viva Chell is very useful if you want to do... Uh, TOA Dark Spires because there's not that many healers for Dark and Viva Chell is actually a healer for Dark so that makes it pretty chill. Is Viva Chell necessarily OP or anything? In NA I never use my Viva Chell except for Spires Dark in all honesty so that is that. It is relatively easy to skill up because we're getting Celia, like if you're in a good guild you're getting Celia pieces on regular base. At some point your Celia is scaled up after like a few months or something. Because I get like 20 Celia pieces per week right now. So at some point Celia will be max skilled with like 8 weeks or something like that. And then I can use those pieces for max scaling uh, Viva Chill as well. Then we also have a surprise challenge. Which is just been handing in a bunch of stuff. And then getting a bunch of scrolls and a lich. Not that interesting but just simple to do. Then something that surprised me that we got already. Which is summoner skill expansion. Which is for every summoner, the S1 skill, if I'm not mistaken, will be changed. So I'm not entirely sure how this will work. It is also something that no one can do yet because you need level 70 summoner to actually do this. Which actually makes it for me interesting to rush for level 70 summoner because I kind of want to see how this works out. But apparently you can switch one of your skills, if I'm not mistaken, for a different skill and then... You can use that differently. I don't know. So wait, for Orbia, you can acquire use skill 1. And for Kina and Cleave, uh, use skill 2. So wait, is that that Orbia, you replace the skill 1. And Keith and Kalina replace the skill 2. I'm not entirely sure how that works out. But yeah, let's look at the skills. But yeah, apparently you need level 70 for that. And then also these. Now, well, this is relatively easy to get. This, however, will take you a little bit of time. So let's see, on the fire we have drops a meteor, 10 second cooldown, so yeah, it's definitely the S1. Uh, stuns, stuns on S1 is definitely not bad. Also burning, if burning is applied. Oh wow, that's actually a good stunner, damn. That's, for fire, pretty strong, because fire was just straight up damage, and now it's adding extra CC in there as well. That's pretty nice. So on water, we will have uh, freeze, apply movement speed down. That is pretty nice against cleaves and like assassins and that kind of stuff. This is actually very good against assassins, even though most assassins that are kind of good, like Lupinus and 
Athna are wind. You're hitting it with water. So that's kind of meh, but still pretty good. And it roots. Root is very strong, like especially against Cleave and that kind of stuff. Like if anything is melee target and it's just rooted and a bunch of mages and um, archers are shooting at it, that's pretty strong. That's actually something I think is pretty legit in general. Then the last one is throwing three gusts of wind over across the field. Okay, within parts, uh, electric shock. Okay, that's not bad, electric shock. And then also damage that penetrates defense if the target has a certain amount of harmful effects. So ignore defense in this game is not as strong as it is in Sky Arena because that's 100% like nullifying defense. In this game, it is a percentage of the defense that is ignored. But that is still pretty strong. And if there's three harmful effects, so I guess this is more PvE related. The S1 was on wind was already PvE related, but this seems pretty freaking strong, actually. Especially since electric shock is not something you apply too commonly. I feel like this is a pretty strong one for Orbia Wind, definitely. So pretty curious to see how that will actually work out. Then we have Kina. Kina has S2s. In all honesty, I am not too familiar with Kina, like what she does on every S2. I do know that the fire S2 is the attack buff, if I'm not mistaken. And that gets changed to skill acceleration. I'm not going to focus too much into those because I don't really know Kina all too well. Same for this one. I think the other one also had like the attack speed up. So I'm not necessarily sure if this is like a buff or a nerf or is it like a lot better, slightly better. I am not too sure. Interesting thing is it's also for the three normal elements. So it's not for light and dark. Um, and then we also have that for Cleave. Once again, I'm not going to focus too much on the Cleave and the Kina because in all honesty... I'm not sure if it's getting better or worse or something in between, but you can definitely read this through. And I think like all of them seem pretty interesting. The only thing that I'm kind of worried about is the wind one on Orbia. The wind S1 actually goes through uh, Endure, which is a very good Endure killer against like Theomarses, but also against Cleaves. So I'm not sure if this makes that slightly worse. So I'm not entirely sure if that makes it good or bad. And also if it's like easy to switch back and forth, but I think it is. So then we also have one more thing on runes, and that is something that I also haven't seen in NA yet, so I'm not entirely sure how that will work. But we will have a few different things on like rune management in general, but also what you can do with runes. So we have crafting the runes that comes from like the hero area. Rune succession, I haven't really seen this yet. I am not sure. Increase the target's rune enhancement leveling while using one max. I am not entirely sure what this is or like you can get EXP on your runes or some sh I have no clue what this would. This is something I totally would have to see in game because I can't really make an impression of like what this would be. This one is easy to understand. Rune combining, you can combine four star runes to have a chance to get a five star rune. But you can also combine like hero five stars to get a legendary rune. I guess that's okay. I think it becomes interesting the moment we get six star runes, which is going to be at the next uh, big update, or not the next big update, but the update that NA uh, is having today as well. So getting the five star rune is very doable to get five star runes right now. So it's not really an issue to get five star runes. But the moment we can use five star runes to get six star runes, that becomes interesting, I would say. And then we also have equipment refinement, which is pretty much reaps, if I'm not mistaken. So that is pretty chill. That that's just it, it works slightly different, but um, I didn't do it too much in NA. But I think I'll do a video on that at a later moment as well to more explain like what are those things and how does that work exactly. And then we also have a bunch of things for the exchange center. Okay. Skystones will be removed from tradable items. Wait, you can no longer buy and sell Skystones? Wow, did not expect. That is interesting, though. I have a lot of Skystones I actually kind of wanted to sell, not gonna lie. <laughs> like, I ain't gonna lie. So Skystones right now is a resource you cannot buy from the exchange shop anymore. Wow, did not expect that. Interesting. Um, yeah, then we also have a bunch of... Uh, transmogs that are new. I don't really like those all too much. We have the Viva Chill. And we have the 
oracle so in this case oracles the things they do the main oracle that's very useful is going to be juno i have seen some people use sierra and praha Praha's pretty cool for the uh sleep if she still does it yeah she does still does the sleep sleep is pretty decent in this game because you don't wake up in one hit you wake up from like multiple hits i think you have to do like five hits for, for a shit to wake up so Praha is pretty decent i would say but Juno is the one that's actually really good. And Sierra can be niche here or there. Lima and Gianna, I'm not too sure if they're very good. I think they're pretty decent, but not insanely OP or anything. Uh, then we have a bunch of new outfits and new rides. We get the Halloween outfits, it seems, for purchasable outfits. And then we also get the uh, Magic Deck Airbite, which is a, a mount, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, apparently this one is pretty hard to get like you need a lot and a lot of points to actually get this this will take you freaking forever so i wouldn't really aim on getting this and it's just it is as fast as the other mounts would be cool if this thing was actually fast or some shit so it's actually useful but apparently it's not the case so i'm not sure um then we also have a merchant for Exchange the items for gold. I'm not entirely sure what this is. I haven't, I don't remember this event if we even had it in NA. Not gonna lie, I don't really remember. Uh, then we also have a bunch of stuff for Monster Adventure Log event. I'm not sure about this event as well. Uh, I guess it's mainly doing something with Guard Journal, which I think most of us already kind of cleared or are pretty far on clearing. You have an event on Naraka that's just clearing Naraka and just getting a bunch of stuff like that. It's pretty normal. We get another Lucky Bingo event, which is pretty nice as well. Um, Lucky Bingo in general is just very chill, very nice. And then we also have a Login as One event, which is... Wait, so that's another crossover event for Sky Arena, or is it? No, that's just... I, I thought it was like... I saw Summoner's War, I thought, like, that's Kyria. Apparently, this is just, like, you just log in and you get some rewards. Okay, cool. Doesn't matter all too much. Then we have a few new changes and improvements. So, currently, the Soul Link skill with the lowest mana will always be used first. I am not sure how that entirely works. Let's say you have a 3 uh, mana cost and a 4 mana cost. Does your uh, monster always start using their 3 mana cost? The moment you have three mana up so you will never use your four skill i don't know that looks pretty weird i don't know um add a setting that ignores summoners monsters that will be added to the target list okay this is something that's useful for battlefields um because in battlefields you mainly want to target the summoners rather than the monsters and if you click on the monsters like at some point it's like a pile of zoo with like 9v9 and that kind of shit so it's pretty chill there there was a workaround for this which you don't have to do right now but that i guess that's pretty chill we have repeat battles set the number oh this is pretty chill as well especially since in this game you don't lose a ticket if you uh don't win the thing but let's say you have like a run that clears it like 50 percent of the time but you just leave it on overnight even if it's like 20 percent over uh of the time but you leave it on overnight with like 100 tickets or something you are going to clear it at some point so the only thing is, like, you lo uh, you stop if you lose three times in a row. Well, fair. That that's pretty fair, I would say. Uh, then we have a bunch of things with quests that is easy to recognize. Cool. Then we also have auto gathering, mining, and that kind of stuff. So I think that's pretty chill. And if I'm not mistaken, this will also replace the lizard. At least that was what their original plan is. But maybe the lizard still remains. But apparently, we have like a daily limit that you can. Wait, both auto and manual mining? So wait, does that mean that you cannot mine like 15,000 things anymore in a day? Because some people were actually doing that and they actually give like a premium pass for that as well. Motherfuckers. So I'm not entirely sure how that works that they... Yeah, apparently the daily limit is for both of them. Gee, that kind of sucks, I guess. Either how, like, they didn't make it that account level is super, like, OP. That's, like, some people have, like, that willed a lot. They have, like, 70 plus, 80 plus. I've even seen people on Nani already. But if you're free to play, you can definitely get 50, 50. So, like, somewhere around, like, 
47, 48 is where it starts slowing down quite some, but 50 is pretty doable, I would say. So you will get to that 200 at some point, but I'm somewhat surprised that even for manual mining, it's also limited right now. It is going to make it a lot easier for people to just auto mine, though. That, that part is pretty chill. Uh, then we have raids. Raids will also give extra sky stones right now. So I think they're adding a lot of sky stones in a lot of places. But you can no longer actually trade, buy, or sell like that kind of sky stone. So that's somewhat odd. If you still have the things from the Bastet event, you can throw them in for getting some gold pieces. That is okay. Um, they add restoration stone to the challenge arena shop, which is very nice. This one is actually super, super chill. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, someone told me in Korea server it costs about 1k of those points for restoration stone. But that also means you can buy it weekly. So that adds another 4 restoration stones per month. Which originally you had, like, I think you had 2 free to play, both from like TOA normal, TOA hard. But that makes it that you can experiment a lot more around with like certain units, builds, and whatnot. And if you're smart, and I will make a specific video on that as well. You can use the exchange uh, shop pieces to get pieces for something to use as skill up and then pull out the devil mons using these restoration stones. So that is something that's definitely uh, going to be useful in there and that's pretty chill. Um, we also have, will not disappear once they have been read. Okay, that's fine. Then we also have megaphones. You can, can be purchased from level 50 before 35. Okay, I guess that's just anti uh, bots and that kind of shit that's pretty chill uh, and then we have a spring concept okay it doesn't really matter and then we have a bunch of things that are fixed doesn't really seem too much too interesting stuff it seems like no it doesn't seem too much so yeah that was a pretty wall of text um that's actually a lot of stuff being added in there there's also a whole bunch of things in there that are not in NA server yet. Well, they will be updated to the NA server today as well. So I'm pretty curious to see like how that will work out with the runes. Um, I'm slightly disappointed that Naraka is right away going to be a nerfed version of Naraka. I think that's actually really sucky, especially since our drop rates are not boosted to normal rates of having like the three times per week, because that means that you actually have a lot less Naraka runs in general. So yeah, we will see how that works out. Um, we still have to wait a few more hours for the update itself. So guys, if you already watched this, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. And probably see me live the moment the update hits on twitch.tv slash See you boys.